You want to be a YouTuber, but you don't know how to film yourself. And you're looking online to figure out, okay, how do I film myself? And you're seeing a bunch of videos where people have like the craziest gear and they got all this equipment and you're just like, that's a lot. That's a lot to think about. And I can't do that. And it's, it's freaking you out. So then you end up just not doing it at all. Yeah, if that's you, then you're on the perfect video because I'm here to tell you how to film yourself and make it the easiest, cheapest way possible, right? So the first thing you're going to want to do is get a camera. If you have the budget to get a nicer camera, get a nicer camera. Personally, I use the Sony ZV-1, and um, I have, I'll have that link down below. You know, if it's a if it's something you're interested in. But the reason I like this camera is it's mirrorless, which means if it's if you're inside and you go outside and the temperature is different, it's not going to be foggy and I have to acclimate, you know, it's going to give you a really clean image. And also it has an autofocus, which means if I put something close to it, it'll focus on it. And if I move it, it'll focus on me. So it's a really cool camera. I have it linked down below if you're interested in copying one of these, if you got the budget for it. And if not, you have a phone. I think any phone will do just well enough, you know, phones, iPhones, Androids, whatever phone really, literally, I, I feel like video, ironically, isn't even the most important part of filming yourself, as long as you have something decent enough, you'll be able to get very far, because even if you have like a super old camera, like maybe that's just a part of your vibe, the aesthetic, you know what I'm saying, obviously try to keep the, the shots stationary if you got an older older camera you know what i mean if if you don't want to be moving around too much and it looks crazy unless it's a part of what you're going for you know what i'm saying so yeah first thing you're gonna need is a camera and you don't gotta overthink it use your phone and like i said you don't want the the shots all shaky so that leads me into the second thing which is getting a tripod so I know you could like build build stuff and and make makeshift tripods by just like stacking books and all this stuff and I would do that a lot of the time, but then you start to realize like I'm spending too much time trying to figure out how to prop my phone up. And then you start putting your phone in like low, just bad positions because it's just like, all right, this is just where I could put my phone. It's really ideal to have a little tripod and just make it convenient for like, okay, this is where I'm going to put my phone. This is where I'm going to put my camera. I'm just going to put it here and, and it's going to be easy. I could, it could double as a selfie stick if you ever want that. If you're doing something on the go, there's a bunch of different tripods. I'll link them down below. I'll have a couple, you know, if you need them for like your phone or if you need them for like a, a bigger camera, you know, we'll have all of those there for you guys ready. Next thing I want to say is lighting. Lighting's huge. Lighting can make or break a shot. Um, for example, like if I turn my light off right here, that, that makes a shot look really different, you know, or if I change this color over here, it just, it makes a shot look really different. You know what I mean? So you got to be pretty, uh, intentional about your lighting. And my suggestion would be if you can shoot a natural light just use natural light you know be somewhere be near a window try not to have all the lights at your camera that's gonna like make it overexposed you're gonna look kind of crazy so you know just put it in a place where you know you're lit well and you look good you know what i mean lighting lighting's really cool because it's easy to manipulate to give it a completely different vibe you know what i'm saying so i can hear my lighting setup is really easy i have a little ring light right here i got a little light bar super cheap stuff i'll link all this stuff below i'm not gatekeeping you guys could get this same setup little ring light there i mean low low ring light little bar light and then back there i just have a little neon sign and uh, i have my crystal Christmas tree up you know I keep my Christmas tree up all year round and we just decide we just decorate it based on whatever season we're in at the moment so yeah lighting can be very easy very fun and it really enhances your shot not a lot of people are care about their lighting and that could just be what puts you above you know the competition you know you care about your lighting and there's tons of videos on YouTube about how to make your lighting you don't have to overcomplicate it. You know, you could watch these videos, take them with a grain of salt. They're going to tell you to get like 13 different lights, these big box lights, whatever. 
Nah, you could do them with small light. You know, I have a light on my desk, super simple, right next to my tripod, super simple. And like I said, everything's linked below. I'll show you the cheap ones. I'll show you the more expensive ones that we use for like, you know, our bigger clients. But, you know, you could have a little setup just like this and it's super inexpensive. All right. The next thing I'm going to say is background. Your background, you're going to want your background not to be like chaotic, right? Like, you know, as you can see, we got this this Christmas tree, we got a little light, but you don't want too much going on. Obviously, if that's a part of the, the aesthetic, the look you're going for, then cool, you know? But other than that, if you want to be the the thing that people are looking at, right? So say you're in front of, I was in front of like a mansion right now, you'd be kind of distracted. You'd be like, oh, there's a mansion behind you. But maybe if that's like a part of my aesthetic, then yeah, that's what I'm That's what I'm going for. But if I'm the subject in the video or I'm teaching you something and I want you to be able to like lock in on what I'm doing, I'm gonna want a flattering background. It's not too busy. That's why you see a lot of people have these like desk setups or they're in little studios and whatnot. And the backgrounds, you know, they could be decorated nice, but they're usually not crazy. You're not looking at a wall that has like a thousand different colors and you might see that, but majority of the great videos you're going to see online are going to be very strategic about things like that. All right. Earlier, I told you that having the best camera is not even the biggest deal, but one of the things that is a really big deal is having good audio. So there's multiple ways you could do it. Obviously, if you have a camera, get an external mic. So this mic is actually one for my camera, but I just have an aux cord so that I can run it to my desk. You know what I mean? I could have easily just kept the mic on top of the camera, but I wanted it to be up close so that you guys could hear me clearer because audio is a huge part of making these videos and making them good. Having good audio makes or breaks content, honestly, because you can sit there and watch through a video that like, you know, maybe it's grainy or whatever, you know, they had an old camera, or whatever. But if it sounds like garbage, you're going to turn it off. Your ears are going to be like, nah, I'm not here for this. I don't want it. You're going to leave. Next thing we're going to do is frame and position, right? So as far as on your camera, you're going to want to be framed right. You know, you're not going to want to it would be weird if I was talking like and I was framed down here and there's all that space up there or it'd be weird if if I was framed right here right you know be smart about it you know you don't want to have like the camera looking up your nose half the time you don't want it to be like above your head where you're staring up at it all the time you know what I mean you don't want to be like if you're off to the side for a reason you know that's not bad but just keep it within reason don't be all the way to the left of the camera and just have all this blank space for no reason. That would just be weird, you know? So if you're going to make videos like this where you're sitting and talking to the camera, center yourself. If you have some sort of background or ambiance or something that you want to show, then do that. And like I said, with the whole don't make it too busy, don't be afraid to experiment, you know? But just keep in, just be intentional, just as long as you're doing something for a reason, if you're like, hey, I want a busy background, as long as you have a reasoning for wanting that, that is okay. And if you want to show that background a little bit, like, yeah, be off to the sides. What I would say is, look at where my, my hands are right there, right? I would, I would split my screen like that. I would either be right here in the center of that, in the center of this side, and you see how my tree's right there in the center of that side. I'm right here centered up, you know, and that's that's kind of like a good rule of thumb to just make decent videos, have them look good, look professional. Another thing I would say to do is do a test shot, you know, especially if you're filming yourself. If you're fortunate enough, you have a camera that like flips open. Uh, if you're using your phone, you might not. Like, obviously, you could use your front facing camera, but that's not going to be your best camera. Your best quality camera is going to be your back camera. So do a test shot and just make sure it looks good, sounds good, and you're straight, you know? Another thing is, if you ever do 
a test shot and you're like this audio is crap or you get a mic and you're like yo my mic wasn't working and it just it came straight off the camera or there was a lot of echo in a room or whatever another thing you could use is adobe podcast i love using adobe podcast i've used it for literal podcasts that like it, it saved my life i didn't have to re-edit it i've used it for clients I've, it's it's a lifesaver adobe.podcast it's only like ten dollars a month like I said, it's going to be linked below so you can check it out. You can get on there and start using it. I love Adobe Podcasts. I'll always recommend it. So what Adobe Podcast does is it'll take your your audio from your camera or whatever and it'll enhance it. It's it's an AI tool. It'll enhance it and it'll make it sound like it was coming out of a studio mic. And it's freaking awesome. I recommend it 10 out of 10. There are some drawbacks that I personally think it's better to use a studio mic if you have that option. And if you don't have that option, no big deal because Adobe Podcast exists. You know, it's a it's a game changer. And if you use like apps like CapCut, I think they do have like an enhancer thing too where it just enhances the audio. But you're going to see a lot of these AI integrations with audio because it's it's important you know and the people who know know that these are really good tools that are really going to help people and that's why they're out here so don't forget about all that you know so let me do a rundown of the things we said before i tell you the last thing you got to do we got you got to get the nice camera and by nice camera i mean the nicest camera you can get if that's your phone run with that get the camera get a nice tripod nice tripod could be small, could be big, depends on what you need, depends on the budget, but we got options. Get the lighting and make sure you got, you're just looking, you're, you're well lit, you know, you don't need to be overly lit, but you don't want to be like in a dark room and then you're dark, you can't see you or whatever, you know, make sure you got a nice light on you, you know, make sure they could see who you are, they see your features, you know what I'm saying? See your beautiful faces. We got your background. You don't want your background to be overly busy. You want it to be nice. You want it to be flattering. You know, you don't want it to be distracting. You want to make sure your audio is straight. Getting a mic. Getting on Adobe Podcast or finding some sort of editing software that enhances audio. You can literally get on Google and look up enhance my audio and you'll find a bunch of options. You know what I'm saying? All right, you got your frame and position. You don't want to be in a weird part of the camera for no reason. You want to make sure you do your test shot. Look at it. Make sure you like it so that you can commit to doing however long of that video is there. And the very last thing you have to do is press record. Literally just press that record button and record yourself and you'll be like, wow, this was insane. This wasn't that hard. And I promise you, over time, it gets a lot easier. It gets a lot easier. You know what I'm saying? Your very first video, like, by the time you make your 100th video, you're going to be like, wow, I can't believe that. And you'll definitely make 100 videos if you stick to it. You know, this video content creation thing, it's not about just like, oh, I'm going to make one video, be viral. Woo. Like, yeah, that can happen. But as quick as you get it, it could be as quick as you lose it. You know what I'm saying? So this has to be something that you enjoy. And if you're putting out a video a week for two years, you're going to have your 100th video. And that 100th video versus the first one is going to be like nine day difference it's just putting the hours in you know if you want to get good at anything you just got to keep doing it got to keep showing up you know you want to get strong keep showing up to the gym and start doing the workouts and put the work in and, and do it and it'll it'll happen for you you know what i'm saying it's your boy smosh and claire follow me on instagram that's down below if you want to keep seeing more videos like this we're putting out a series on how to become an influencer so check them out peace out love you guys